our symbols, but independence does not begin and end. Uganda's post-independence Prime Minister and two-term President Dr. Milton Obote was born in Akokoro village in Apache district and this is where he was buried but Obote's contemporaries and some of those who know him well say the man who was later to play a key role in Uganda's post-independence politics spent his formative years in Akokoro but with his mother's relative here in Aloi village at Leptong district. <laughs> Yeah. Solomon Nanyua saw Obote as a young man growing up and taking interest in politics. The people loved Obote and saw him as one of their own. The young Obote was friendly and freely interacted with everyone. Not surprisingly, when Obote stood for elections as the people's representative, he received an overwhelming support from the ordinary people. According to John Okello Balamor, after Obote returned from Nairobi where he was working, he joined the Uganda National Congress, led by Ignatius Musasizi. Indeed, UNC later merged with Obote's party to form the Uganda People's Congress. As Obote joined him, he brought in a very brilliant idea that uh, oh, Uganda National Congress be prehensed. Hmm? other than being as large as that because National Congress was so large that it involved even the Europeans, Asians, right. the Arabs and the, and the rest of it. In the campaigns, Obote had three competitors, but he beat them with a wide range in the election to represent East Lango in the Legislative Council. When the, when the, when the two parties yes. were already on a, a, flat, a, a very strong base, the idea of or request for humble request for self-government came in. Decided to go and go for a conference. They were they asked to be in the in, I mean to go for a conference in London, uh, whereby they were the two were allowed to go uh, for self-government request. Okelo Balamor explains that after the elections, Obote and Benedicto Chiwanuka left the country for London for Uganda's independence preparations. came back with the Chiwanuka, they organized a very good system of election. Yeah. Hmm? Obote is described as someone who loved peace and was always willing to listen to everyone. His interacting with the people was so good and uh, in fact, uh, Naturally, I, I as observed, he was politically well conversed and very influential by then. John Okello Bolomor worked then as a registration assistant in the internal self-government led by Benedicto Chiwanuka. He was one of the electoral officials of the time. This is actually my necktie for oh, during registration in 1962. Uh, this is another one oh, in 1958. Election. Obote here has, has got other three contesters uh, Obote, uh, Oluit Ben, Okai Jepenia, and then Obote passed and opposed. Yeah. He notes that one of the biggest challenges of the time was the poor network. It's a real task, and that, that, that was, that's why I say transport was the, was the major, major, major problem in the communication system. By then it was known as Alepton County and it's where the former president Dr. Milton Obote represented the people of Lango in the legislative assembly. But today not much development can be seen in the district. A jury MP Hamson Oboa who represents the area notes that Uganda's history is incomplete without tracing Alepton district. A case in point is in 1961 when Uganda went into the polls for electing representatives to the Legislative Council, abbreviated as LEGICO. The founder president of Uganda, Dr. Apollo Milton Obote, who hails from the current Apache district, because then we had only two constituencies in Lango, opted not to contest in Apache, but opted to contest in the current Aleptong district and Otuke and some part of uh, Lira. But 
His constituency headquarters in 1961 was at a place called Aloy, which is currently in Aleppo. Political leaders in Aleppo district believe that a memory or some sort of monument should be put here in memory of the former president and independence icon. That Aleppo has played a big, big role. Because if Aleppo had not elected or voted to Lejiko, I believe even the event that unfolded a year later of uh, superintending over the lowering down of the British Union Jack and the raising up of the Ugandan national flag symbolizing independence would have not been witnessed. We appeal to government to look at those historical facts such that if there are celebrations being held, we don't only look at Luero. Let's look at places like Aleppo. Tomorrow, in the second part of our series Focus on Aleptong, we we'll bring you the life of Field Marshal John Okello, who hailed from Aleptong. John Okello led the Zanzibar Revolution that led to its proclamation as a republic. More research on TV.